picture a house. This house is haunted, a nightmare, a dread. It's decaying so fast, there's no more life in here, it's dead. It's falling apart day in and day out. Its foundation is unsteady, it's almost like it's giving out. The roof is caving, the doors are crumbling, the tile is rotten and filled with cracks. There's mold and mildew when I look to my back. Everything is broken, shattered, crushed to pieces. The lights are dimming and they're beginning to flicker. And by the second, it seems to be getting darker even quicker. The darkness inconvenience the day and it's unbearable at night. I can't do this anymore. There has to be more in store. I've heard of this renovator who's the greatest of them all. There's rumors of a guy that takes every call. No matter how raggy or filthy, he doesn't deny it all. And don't worry about a down payment because insurance covers that guarantee because he paid it all when he laid it all down on the cross on Calvary. Bought and beaten, blood spilled, thorns through his skull, nails through his heels. Indeed, his name is Jesus Christ. So I gave him a call, and in the blink of an eye, without a flinch, the transformative powers of the cross began to kill the stench of sin, and the renovator came and did only what he could do, many what's broken, making all things new. See, he doesn't just repair, he renovates, he renews, and he isn't done yet. He isn't just satisfied with the surface repairs, so he's headed down to the basement. He's going down the stairs. He's at the last door, but it's locked. He looks me deeply in the eyes and asks me if I'll let him in. After all, he gave it all when he took away my sins, but no. No, this door will remain locked. It must remain locked, for this room is for me. It's where I hide my greatest sins, my deepest lies, my ugliest truths, my dirty mind, my pornographic addiction. And I wish that these were lies, but these monsters are not fiction. Sir, all the other rooms you can have, but this one. You can't come in. He patiently asked me again to the keys to this room. And he told me that I can trust him. I can trust him. I can trust him. After all, he has a history of fixing the worst of the worst. He's the best renovator around. And he tells me that he can handle my worst. So with no precaution, I relented and I let him in. He opened up the doors to the core of my destruction. Now everything that's been hiding has come to light. And to be quite frank, I don't know if this decision was right because now I've been left exposed. And like Eve hiding behind that tree, staring face to face with filthy me, my deficiencies, they amuse me and abuse me. My flaws, my crooked sins, their claws dig deep into my skin, into my soul soul there's too much damage here I'm not staying but I'll wait I'll wait but wait I'm waiting on his reaction, but I'm perplexed because it's panning out to be an unexpected transaction he's still here In the midst of my filth, he's still here. He stayed. He isn't disgusted. He isn't upset. He's waiting for me because I've lived haunted by these monsters for far too long. And now I see why he's the best renovator of all. Because he doesn't just walk into a room and paint over the ugliness. He takes the darkness in the room and he transforms it. Flipping it upside down, he turns darkness into the master's room. 
into a haven for intimacy, a sanctuary for holiness, a temple for godliness. He nails an eviction notice on the door and tells darkness to flee forever in his name. He flips over those beds and tells those demons they can no longer stay here for their residency has been terminated in Jesus' name. And I've got good news. This is his house now, and he's here to stay. Final sale, the price has been paid. <laughs>